Hi, I'm A.J. Jacobs, author of The Know-It-All and The Year of Living Biblically. I was a journalist. I did. I worked at a, a newspaper in Northern California that had a uh, circulation of about 14 people uh, writing about, uh, you know, PTA meetings and uh, and sewage taxes. I wrote a lot about sewage for some reason. And then I worked at Entertainment Weekly magazine uh, covering B and C list TV stars. That seemed to be my niche. And then I got a job at Esquire and and edited the wine. I edited the front section of Esquire magazine, which had they talked about wine and cars, both of which I knew nothing about. But uh, but it also gave me an opportunity to do some some things I was passionate about. When I started to do these you know, life experiments for magazines and realized what a great way it is into a topic. So, for instance, uh, a few years ago, I did an article called My Outsourced Life, where I hired a team of people in Bangalore, India, to live my life for me. So they answered my phone and answered my email, and they argued with my wife for me, and they uh, they read bedtime stories to my son. So it was really, that was one of the best months of my life. And I was like, hey, if I could do this for a living. You know, it was interesting. When I wrote The Year of Living Biblically, I wasn't quite sure how it would be received. But I have to say, I've been very blessed to use a biblical word because I I got a pretty warm reception from both the secular community and the religious community. The The secular community embraced it, I think, because they got to see, to learn about religion. And, and the religious community, I went in there I went in there not to mock religion, but to try to understand it as someone who had had no religion in my life whatsoever. So I think they were excited to see someone who was who was really trying. And uh, this is probably boasting, which is not biblical, so you'll have to forgive me for this. But when the book came out, uh, I was on the cover of an evangelical Christian magazine and also featured in some uh, many Jewish magazines, but also same month, I was featured in Playboy and Penthouse. So I was very excited to bridge that gap, sort of be a uniter, not a divider. This year changed me more profoundly than I ever anticipated. I knew it would be interesting, but I didn't know it would be really quite that life-changing. It changed me in in dozens of ways that still uh, resonate with me. And and they're little things and they're big things. Uh, One is gratitude. I learned the importance of being thankful for the hundred little things that go right every day, as opposed to focusing on the the three or four that go wrong. You know, just the fact that you press the elevator button, the elevator comes and you get in and it doesn't plummet to the basement. You know, that is, uh, we should be thankful for that. I still observe the Sabbath which I think is a, a a beautiful tradition, whether you're an atheist or a religious person. In this in these days when we're all workaholics and working 24/7 right through the weekend, to have this one day off where we, to reflect and and to uh, to marvel at what we have, I think is a, a wonderful thing. I grew my beard out for the entire year, and by the end it was quite enormous. You know, I, I spent a lot of time at airport security. Uh, so that's the, the kind of beard we're talking. And when I shaved it, I was a little bittersweet. You know, even though it was wildly uncomfortable, I felt like uh, I was sort of losing a member of the family. Uh, so I did save it. I put it in a uh, plastic bag. And I actually suggested to to Simon & Schuster, I was like, hey, we could do a marketing thing where we give away a little bit of the beard with every first hundred books sold. And they told me that was a repulsive idea and that they had uh, wanted no part of that. So uh, so, so I still have the entirety of the beard. My next project, I actually signed up for two books with Simon & Schuster that I'm very excited about. The first one will be a collection of experiments that I do on myself. For instance, uh, I, I tried something called Radical Honesty, it's a movement where they believe you should never, ever lie. But more than that, you should whatever's on your brain should come out of your mouth. There should be no filter. So I tried this for a month, and this was one of the worst months of my life. Because, you know, you don't want to be doing this. I, uh, the name of the uh, essay is, uh, I think you're fat. So that gives you an idea of what, what the ordeal was like. 
So it'll be a collection of those essays. And then the second book after that will be uh, my quest to be the healthiest person in the world. The, uh, the know-it-all was about it, trying to improve my mind, radically make over my mind. And the, the year of living biblically was about trying to radically make over my spirit. This will be about my body. I would have to say that uh, being fruitful and multiplying was my greatest achievement. That was The Bible says to be fruitful and multiply, and I took my project very seriously. And uh, we had twin boys. My wife and I had twin boys during my year. So uh, perhaps that's my greatest achievement. Thank you.